Anthony Curtis, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Not All too right. bad. Not too bad. And uh, if you guys are not familiar with Anthony Curtis, he is the publisher of the Las Vegas Advisor Newsletter, and he is our go-to authority on all things Las Vegas. We do these videos. We try to do them once a month with him uh, to keep up with all the goings-on in Las Vegas, and that's what we're doing. This one is for the beginning of August 2022. Uh, I have my dad here, Steve Borey, as always. So I guess let's just hop right into it and start with the first question. How is business? Is it still booming? Yes. Um, you know, almost somewhat surprisingly that uh, with the way the economy is right now, with the way uh, energy prices are, the price of gas, the price of, of plane tickets, everything's going up. You would expect to be, you know, see a little bit of a pullback. Um, the analysts who look at these things say that we're going to see that soon. But I mean, right now, just uh, empirically looking around, it, we don't see it. You know, I mean, uh, the, the casinos are still very busy here. Um, you know, people are still coming. They're still spending money. They're still gambling. I got to say, uh, talking about plane tickets, I had tickets to a concert there last week and I ended up, I just ate the price of the tickets for at the house of blues. Cause it was like $600 a person to fly out there. I just said, no, thanks. Yeah. Rather just eat the cost of the hundred bucks on the two tickets. Well, see, that's what we expect to happen, or at least that's what I expect to happen. I, I would expect that this would start to have an effect, um, and maybe it is. I mean, maybe you're a perfect example of what people are going to start to do. But as of right now, I mean, you know, even for the summer, it's been uh, it's been busy. Business is good. You know, they keep announcing new projects and new things coming, and uh, you know, so far so good for the city. And uh, I don't know how good that is for the customer. I think it's better for the customer when uh, the casinos start to hurt a little bit. Um, so we'll see what happens. I, I had a question about the weather because I've, I've, you know, for the past few months, I've heard about the drought out there, how Lake Mead keeps dropping. And now last week there were there were article uh, uh, stories about uh, flooding uh, because of rains in Las Vegas. What's the situation with that? Well, the weather here has been absolutely absurd. I mean, you know, I've been here many summers, over 40 different summers, and and I understand the heat here, but it is one of the hottest summers we've had. Uh, constantly over 110 degrees. Now, last week we had one of the most torrential rainfalls I've ever been involved in. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I actually, the uh, advisor was due two days later and I changed the lead to write about the storm. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how incredible it was. And it was, uh, it was only about an inch of rain, a little bit more than an inch of rain, but it all happened so That quickly. was it? An yeah, inch that of was rain. It. Wow! It was, I would rate it. I wrote <laughs> it that I would rate it in my top three storms that I've ever seen here in Vegas. It wow. was coming down for a period of about 10, 15 minutes. So hard, it, it, the winds were blowing so hard. The rain was going sideways, and then it completely changed direction and went the other direction sideways. And it was really something. I mean, all the wow. casinos were flooding. Uh, yeah. Rain was coming through the through the roof. Rain was coming through the uh, the odds boards at Circa. Uh, we've yeah, got I saw that. That was the video I saw that made me put this in the in the questions. It's that's crazy. That was all from an inch of rain. We call that a Tuesday down here in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was amazing, but we've got uh, we did a blog on it at LasVegasAdvisor.com. We got a bunch of cool videos. There's one of a guy playing at the Fremont. He's just pounding away on a slot machine, and the the water is coming down on the machine and splashing over him, and he's not moving. He's pounding away. I mean, that's Vegas, right? I guess he was winning. <laughs> so I guess, or losing, who knows? Now, a uh, question we touched on last time, but I was just uh, going to retouch on it because it was pretty new then to see. Uh, MGM completed their deal that they're taking over the Cosmo, all the operations of the Cosmopolitan Casino. You seen any changes there yet? Have they rolled over the player's card? It's still identity, or what's the deal with that? Uh, yeah, we're seeing a few things. Um, I've, I've got a buddy who's staying there right now. Funny you should bring it up. Because as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go see him there. So I'll know a little bit more after we've already done this talk. Uh, it looks like they're in the process of making some changes there, but, but nothing specific. I mean, it's still the identity card at Cosmo, but it looks like what everybody's talking about is that the changes are coming pretty soon. So nothing yet. And it's still cosmopolitan. You know, it's still just full of all the beautiful people and, uh, you know, money everywhere and uh, good restaurants and the whole deal and paid parking and all those good things. Now, I had a question on, on the Palms because uh, I'm on the mailing list, I guess, from Yamaha, but they're sending generous offers, free play, 
uh, free room nights. Uh, w- one question is, how are they doing? And the other thing is, we saw a video the other day uh, for this. What was it? The lobster? Uh, buffet? The, lo- was- the seafood night that we talked about last time. It was in the, dude, the oh, it- video was from like two in the afternoon and there were like 500 people in line. It was insane. Yeah, and it doesn't. It didn't open to what six or something, or and it was like a three or four hour wait, and these people yeah. were in line already. Yeah, I can explain. Um, you know, we'll talk about the palms a little bit first. Let's go back to your first thing. I'm not sure how well they are doing. I hear I hear back and forth about how they're doing. Um, in terms of getting offers, now here's a real interesting one. I've heard of people who are getting really great offers from the palms, and I went and played there, and I ran twenty thousand through on a on a sunday and uh, i didn't get one thing wow and now twenty thousand is significant that's enough mm-hmm. to get offers from just about anywhere in vegas and i did not get a single thing uh, i've heard that it's possible that they are targeting names because i heard the same thing from bob dancer he went to play and got nothing so maybe they don't uh... want dancer and maybe they don't want anthony curtis maybe that's what it comes down to they don't want anthony mm-hmm. curtis so i don't get anything in the mail i don't know so I can't, I can only speak from my own experience that I didn't get a damn thing <laughs> for playing there. Um, others, I've heard, you know, some different things. As far as the lobster buffet, they're doing, I mean, that's the most popular thing in Vegas right now. And they were opening at four o'clock and running till nine and people were lining, starting mm-hmm. to line up, you know, one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, they were getting, there were, there were four, basically four hour waits in line to get in and a bunch of people they cut off the line somewhere around four or five o'clock so no one else could get in line. Now they've done a couple of things. Now they've got pagers where you can sign up for, put your name on a, on a list and they'll page you rather than having to sit in line. But the pager list has been an hour and an hour and a half. And the other thing they did is they moved up the starting time to two o'clock. So now instead of four o'clock, oh. it's two o'clock, but you gotta get there even earlier because the lines are still the same, you know, yeah. ferocious as they have been. And, you know, you're looking at, again, three and four hour waits there for all you can eat lobster. So I haven't eaten it because I don't want to stand in line. I can't tell you how good it is. I've heard both. I've heard it's really great. And I've heard people go, eh, wasn't worth the wait. So I don't know. Now, my question, I always got to ask, uh, how's Virgin doing? I was there. Uh, I It's, I guess, close to my heart since I keep asking about it. If they picked, I saw they're getting some, some bigger names in uh, music not really my cup of tea but they are getting some big names if you're into that uh certain genre of music yeah i hate to keep you know telling the same story but i don't think much has changed there Mm -hmm. and um, i agree with you that some of their entertainment's been really good i'll tell you another thing they do well at virgin is they've got happy hours in all of their places so you know whether you're going to their bars or their restaurants they've got happy hours that are very uh, interesting and enticing um the, what they haven't done yet which we've discussed in the past is they haven't loosened their their games in terms of their um re- return their payback uh, numbers you know i mean their percentages of return have not been um made better on the uh, on the video poker games and i just don't think that they're going to be able to get any kind of momentum until they do that they've just got to have based on where they are they've got to have a, a looser product and they haven't done that yet yeah and if you're not familiar with virgin that's what used to be the hard rock it's what is it like a half mile off the strip something like that yeah it's about a mile and a half off the yeah, strip. mile mile and a half off the strip so it's, it's a bit of a trek to get out there so that's why they don't get the foot traffic and it's virgin virgin mm-hmm. runs the hotel and uh, mohegan the mohegan, mohegan sun, sun yeah from uh, connecticut casino and mohegan is the one that's being you know a little bit stingy on the machines i you know i check often to see if they've changed their pay tables they haven't done anything since the opening mm-hmm. surprises me and, and Matt, you mentioned Hard Rock there. Now, the Hard Rock brand is owned by the Seminole Tribe of Florida, and we play at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. Now, the, the Seminoles bought uh, the Mirage uh, on the Las Vegas Strip from uh, MGM. Now, that deal has closed, Anthony, correct? Yeah, that one's, yeah, that one is now, that's a done deal as far as I understand. There's always, you know, a few loose ends here and there, but I think that one's done. They've actually come out with a, um, a statement that they will, when they close to do the rebranding, they won't, they don't think they're going to reopen until 2025. Wow. Oh, wow. Amazing to me, you know, that they wow. would down that long. Um, but supposedly they're going to, they're going to shut it down toward either the end of this year or the beginning of next 23. And it may be a full two year transition there. Hmm. Well, and I guess they're going to build, they have this guitar hotel here. Uh, they're going to build the same thing right there in the Las Vegas Strip. That's in the plans. 
Yeah, well, think of all the things they're doing. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna you know dismember. Take, I don't know if dismember is the word. They're, they're gonna take down the uh, volcano. Um, they're going to clear space. They're going to build this hotel tower, you know, with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, what is it, guitar, right? You know, yeah. with the, the guitar facade. Um, they're going to rebrand everything. Um, well, I got I got to jump in there. It is not a guitar facade. The entire building is shaped like a guitar. That's right. That's right. It is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a guitar it's, building, right? It is one of the most in, incredible. Uh, That's a great of Engineering I've ever seen. Yeah, I, yeah, I should, I should have known that. I've seen those, uh, those photos of the ones that exist. They're mm -hmm. pretty amazing that they could actually do there. I wonder what some of those rooms look like. Are they like that? You know, I don't. Well, I don't so what the way it works is so the guitar is shaped like it's like the guitar like that, and on the sides in where it does the little thing, like the little figure eight or of hourglass on the sides, they all have balconies. Those are all the big suites. Oh, that's cool. So the biggest suites are all in there, and then the balconies come out. And then, like, you know how on a regular guitar where it's got that little rectangle at the bottom that all the strings come out of? Right. That Those rooms are all set forward on that one floor. So it, it's like everything is done, like, in, in the shape of the guitar. And then at the top of the guitar where it has the little thing, uh, like where you would normally put the strap on, that's where the uh, they have a two-story uh, suite up there that has its own private swimming pool that's situated in that little dip at the top of the guitar. Well, sounds cool. Well, you can see why yeah. they're going to take two years plus mm -hmm. to get it done. And, you know, there's just a lot of questions there. Like, what's going to happen to the Beatles show? You know, love. Oh, yeah. Is love going to survive that? Oh, right? I didn't even think of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a, a lot going on about what will what will be there and what won't and, and what it's going to look like in 2025. Now, now one advantage you guys have in, in Las Vegas that uh, is an impediment here is we have hurricanes. So when they built this, they, they had to especially um, do some research on how to position the building to be most hurricane resistant. I, re I remember reading about that when they were building it. So, so that's an interesting little twist that you guys don't, don't have to worry about there. Well, but, uh, only, for, only for about 10 to 15 minutes a few days ago. <laughs> when you get hit by that one inch of rain. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of babies here crying about it. Now, speaking about of the Seminoles, I had been speaking very highly of them uh, in our last interviews. And I said that it was very good because they did not offer six to five blackjack in their casinos. And I was very excited. Uh, I think they must have been watching our videos because I <laughs> noticed one of the last times I was there, they now have six to five blackjack. Mm. so it's not in the whole casino though they've got like a little mini high limit room it's like a raised platform with like a see-through wall around it in there uh they uh still have three to two and they stand on soft 17 but it's like 25 or 50 dollar minimum in there but uh everywhere else in the casino seems to be uh six to five now. so well, i may have to retract my previous statement yeah also be, sorry yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, because I, I, I follow the video poker there. They had had 9.5 jacks or better for quarter for a long time. They lowered them all to 7.5. So uh, everybody's tightening up, I guess. It's just part of the industry in general. That's significant. You know, for, for a game like, like jacks or better, every mm -hmm. reduction in PIP is about 1.1%. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're lowering the, the return there by 2.2. .2. That's a lot, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that, we're going to see the same thing. You know, I think I've mentioned this before when the, the group from Reno came down and took over the Sahara, I was like, Oh, great. This, we're going to have a, you know, Reno type gambling uh, mentality, which is, which is looser than Vegas. We're going to see that on the strip and heck no, they went right to the strip uh, model. And I, I'm afraid we're probably going to see something like that too, with the Seminoles when they, you know, when they open hard rock. Now, speaking of properties uh, and companies that we love, uh, we're going to go to the opposite end of that now. We're going to talk about stations. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so they had finally announced uh, Rancho, uh, the um, Texas station and the two Fiestas are closed forever, which yeah. is not really that shocking if you think about it. But I was still blown away by it that, that they finally they're just going to tear them down and, and start over or whatever they're going to do. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that was the big news around here. I mean, mm -hmm. in the last month since we talked, the biggest news is the fact that they finally came out and they, you know, talked about the future or lack thereof of uh, both Fiestas, Fiesta Rancho, Fiesta Henderson and uh, Texas Station. And none of them are going to reopen. 
and they are going to essentially they're going to knock the buildings down and sell the land. And the reason they're doing that is because they don't want a casino competitor there. So anybody who wants to go and build a casino there is going to have to you know come through some kind of back door. They're not going to have a a ready-made building right there. And um, you know they didn't think they could make them profitable. Uh, they're going to sell it. They're going to use that money to do other things. They're talking about all kinds of different pro projects that they're doing, all the way from the Durango station, way out on the um, on the southwest side, to um, another one they're talking about on the other side of town, to a new uh, Wildfire, which is one of their brands that's going to be down in the uh, where the old Castaways slash Showboat used to be. So they're you know apparently doing well. They're very aggressive, and uh, those three just are not going to come back. Well, speaking of new stations projects, I saw their big land purchase. They purchased 126 acres uh, on the strip down near South Point. And my question for you is, with their, their promos are getting worse and worse. Their games are getting worse and worse. How the hell are they going to compete with South Point, who is widely known for having the best promotions and the best games in, I almost said South Florida, in uh, Las Vegas, uh, I, I, with the way that they're changing their business model stations and trying to, it, from what I saw on the map, it looked like it was more or less right across the street from South Point. Yeah. How the hell are they going to compete with it? Well, they're going to rely on their database. They're going to rely on all their customers that they have here already. And um, I think they're going to have a hard time. I don't think there's any chance that station's going to be able to pull customers away from South Point. I mean, if I, you know, if I, when I name the best casino operators in Vegas from the from the customer standpoint, South Point's always right there. You know, Ellis Island is another one. Uh, Emerald Island is one that people don't know about in, in Henderson. These are places that they're old style casinos that treat their customers really well, kind of like like Station used to. And mm -hmm. um, I think they're not going to, you know, I don't think that they, they shouldn't be counting on being able to take people away from South Point because I don't think they're going to. But they just figure they've got a big enough database and they're going to be able to get away with it. And uh, they haven't said what they're going to do there yet, so we'll wait and see. Well, the other thing is, is I, I don't, I just look at the monies uh, normally. Isn't 126 acres absolutely massive for a footprint of a casino? It's big. Yeah, it's it's big. So, you know, who knows what they're doing? I mean, they've got, I don't know, I, I, they've got a lot of ambitions. And I mean, I'm sure that a casino would be part of it, but maybe it's a, a, a bigger, you know, a bigger project or maybe they they hold it to sell later, you know, who knows? They haven't really disclosed what they're gonna do with that. But yeah, it's another big move by station. So we can hate them all we want, but they're still, they're doing well. All right, let, like, let's do a quick rundown on some of the basics, uh, see if there's any changes like uh, parking fees, anything changed there? Uh, nothing changed with parking fees, except they've gone up. Um, you know, we've had a- Surprise, a raise. surprise. Yeah, we've had a raise in the parking fees at MGM Resorts. They've all gone up by uh, basically $3. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where Caesars was. Caesars was about three bucks on top of them, ahead of them, um, or more than them, I should say. So they figured they could get away with it and go to $3 more. So that's been the only change is, uh, you know, a, a raise in rates at MGM properties. There's no longer any reason to go, okay, if they're side by side or across the street, I'll go to MGM because it's three bucks less than Caesars because now they're all the same. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, I mean, they just keep it just keeps coming. The hits keep on coming. We'll see what happens. You know, when I think it's inevitable that there's going to be a slowdown due to the economy and it's got to hit the uh, casinos to some degree. So we'll see how they react then. Mm -hmm. Now, what about buffets? Have any more buffets come back? You, you think that's a dead issue? No one's going to go back to buffets anymore. No, I think we're going to see them come back, but nothing has come back in the last couple of months. Um, we're stuck on 13 right now. So there's 13 mm -hmm. buffets total happening. There's some smaller kind of strange buffets, like uh, there's one at Resorts World that is a breakfast only buffet in their coffee shop. Um, same thing, there's something like that at Venetian in um, one of their restaurants there. It's, I um, can't remember exactly the name of it right now. And then there's a one at uh, New York, New York, which are these breakfast buffets, but they're within, you know, they're within a coffee shop. So we don't count them as buffets. So just the, the standalone buffets, um, uh, they are, uh, there's 13 of them. And, you know, the prices change a lot and, you know, up and down and up and down. They're all trying to find their sweet, sweet spot there. But um, I don't think we've seen the last of it. I think we're going to see others open up with buffets, uh, not open up with buffets. I mean, I'll bring back their buffets as, you know, they see that demand is still there, but nothing to report right now on that. 
Okay, and, and one other basic is shows. Everyone likes to go to Las Vegas. They want to see a show. Uh, it had gotten very expensive. Ha have they come down at all, or what's the situation on the shows? Well, the show prices are high. You know, uh, we do this report every year. Where we do a survey, and we found the average show price to be over $100 now, $104. And um, there's ways around that. There's a lot of discounting. And, you know, if you look around, you can find the discounts. But if you're going to buy retail right off the rack, you're going to be paying $100 a ticket. And it's, it's kind of lousy. You know, we just, they just opened a new one called Mad Apple. That's at New York, New York. Um, it's Cirque Show. That's kind of like a hybrid almost between Cirque and, and uh, uh, the, the, um, the one uh, Spiegel World. You know, the stuff that they do there. Yeah, raunchy like absinthe, show. Yeah. You know, absinthe and things like that. So it's a little more edgy. Uh, we just reviewed it. We thought it was really good. It, it runs a little long. It gets a little tedious. Uh, what's going on, though, is that some of the smaller venues are closing. Um, Mosaic on the Strip, which was a place to go for discount shows that were pretty good, has closed. Uh, there's something called the Nevada Room and the Vegas Room that uh, were off the Strip that just announced today that they're closing. So, you know, we're seeing a, a, a tightening there, too, that the lower price shows are going away and the, only the higher price shows are going to be the options. But again, if you look around, you can find discounting. Now, speaking of shows... I saw Adele finally rescheduled her residency. This was supposed to be, what was it, the beginning of this year, end of last year, something like that. Yeah. Uh, her whole crew got COVID. She had to cancel it at the last minute. A lot of people were upset because she didn't actually cancel it. She postponed it because if she had canceled it, everybody could have gotten their money refunded. But since she postponed it, everybody was just stuck with these tickets that weren't worth anything. But now those are going to – it's been rescheduled November 18th to March 25th. Fifth. Has there really been any fallout from that, or is it still everybody just gung ho to see her? Everybody's pretty excited that she's coming. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you can, if you can afford her, you know, you yeah. know speaking back to the, the ticket thing, um, it, you know, it kind of came out that the reason that she postponed was that she was just completely um, unhappy with the way the production was going, mm -hmm. and there was a COVID, um, you know, element to it too. But it really was more that she didn't like the way the stage were set and things like that. And they've gone to a completely new uh, presentation, which she's now is supposedly happy with. Um, what we're seeing now are ticket prices on the, uh, we wrote up about this just recently too in the LVA uh, on a secondary market that the nosebleed seats, the absolute worst seats are going for 600 a piece. And there are actually seats right up front that literally are listed for 42,000 a piece. <laughs> Not wow. kidding. Not kidding. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, if anybody's going to pay that, then they're, they got more money than cents, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, but, but they're actually going, they're listed at that price. Now, the interesting thing is I saw it said holders, the original tickets are getting first access to the new dates. It was either starting today or tomorrow. Uh, that just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen to me. All these people having to go on at once and rebook their, uh, their tickets for, uh, different uh, days and stuff i mean if, if but if you said there's already uh, uh tickets listed in the secondary market i mean it must have already happened so it could have must have been pretty smooth but uh, i have you heard of anything uh, disasters happening with that yet because it sounded like a huge headache no i haven't heard about any glitches on that and but i'm sure that some something will pop up mm -hmm. um again you know i don't you know i live here and i don't see a lot of live shows i um i don't I kind of don't get it. You know, I don't get the mm -hmm. pricing. I don't get the, the hassle of having to go. I, I don't like the idea of paying a big ticket price and then paying for parking to get there. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And then I hear about all these ticket glitches and things. So people who do that and people who pay that, they're ready for that. And, you know, they've experienced it before and it doesn't bother them. So, you know, it, it doesn't bother the operators that it happens. And, you know, it's going to continue as long as people keep paying, you know, paying the price. All right, now comes my favorite part. We're, we're getting ready to wrap this up. And no interview with Anthony Curtis would be complete without, me, <laughs> without me bringing up the sphere. Uh, maybe you, you could give people a little background on the sphere. I always like to get an update because it started out as a smaller project and now it's about $1.8 billion or $1.6 billion for yep. this, this round theater at well, Venetian. I knew you were going to ask Steve, so mm -hmm. I did. I did the latest research just before we started. Um, this is the MSG Sphere. MSG stands for Madison Square Garden. Well, so apparently it's going to be Madison Sphere Garden soon too. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, good point, man. 
Absolutely. <laughs> um, it's looking like uh, sometime, they still haven't given a date, but it's going to open sometime in 2023. So it's going to open next year, I would, I would assume, toward the end of the year. Hooray. Yep. Um, it is going to be the most technologically advanced concert hall in the world with, you know, incredible sound and acoustics and, and what they're going to be able to do. They've announced that the opening act is going to be U2. Okay, the uh, Irish band, uh, you know, worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, Bono there. and all them, yeah. Yep. U2 will open it. It's got 17,000 seats. And, you know, they're, they're working on the exterior now. I mean, excuse me, the exterior is about done. They're working on the interior now. And uh, the latest price tag uh, divulged was $1.83 billion. Wow, went up That's again. a lot of money. Yeah, went up. But I saw that it was, the way they worded it, I saw it was U2, but it was worded strangely. It said they're going to be doing a residency, but it had residency in quotation marks. And it yeah. said it was a, what did they say? Non, not in a row. I forget the exact wording they used, uh, non. Uh, so I guess they're just going to be playing like sporadically throughout the year or something. Yeah, they've, what they've done is they've contracted for X number of dates. You know, mm -hmm. it might be six or, or, or 10 or whatever it is. And the, the, the name residency is a big deal around here now. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to use that term. And they went from residency to mini residency to this, you know, pseudo residency, whatever. And the way they're, they're couching it is that they're going to play several dates that have not all been named yet. They're going to play the opening date. And then they're going to, well, they haven't named it because they haven't said when they're going to open it, but they're going to be spread out. So they say that gives a lot more people, a lot more flexibility to be able to see you two in this great venue. So they're kind of like that idea better, to be honest. It's pretty cool. They're going to play multiple mm -hmm. dates. Everybody will be able to plan and have it. And um, they, it hasn't been disclosed, but that's the way it's going to, they're going to work. The only thing that would make that better is if it wasn't you too. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I could agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Who would you prefer it be, Matt? Anyone but Bono. <laughs> oh, okay. Not a Bono fan, I guess. No, right. no, no. Okay. All right. Well, Anthony Curtis, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, if people want to know more about you uh, or your work, where can they do that? Well, just go to uh, two places, lasvegasadvisor.com. You know, all the things we're talking about here, they can see the rainstorm and, and everything else. And uh, then our YouTube channel is uh, just Las Vegas Advisor on YouTube. Check it out. We're, uh, we're starting to roll about 10,000 uh, 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 viewing now. I mean, each time we put one up and we put up a, a um, not a summary as deep as we're going, but we put up a 15 to 16 minute summary every week and you can find out what's going on in Vegas. Cool. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much, Great. Anthony. Great to see you, Anthony, as always. Okay. Thanks you for, guys too. Thanks for joining us. Take care.